Hello everyone, welcome to this session on React versus React Native. React has become one of the most famous front-end web development frameworks and because of that, there are a lot of jargons which are associated with it, which a lot of people confuse with. One such jargon is React Native. So today in this session, we will be understanding the difference between React and React Native and get ahead with our understanding with it. But before we move on guys, if you haven't already, please subscribe to the IntelliPath channel and also click on that bell icon to never miss out on any updates from us. So now let's go ahead and get started with the agenda. So first guys, we're going to move on and talk about what is React.js and then talk about the advantages of React.js, what has made React so popular among front-end web developers. After that, we'll move on and talk about React Native, the advantages of React Native. And finally, we will be differentiating between what is React JS and what is React Native basically used for. So guys, this is the agenda for this session. I hope it's clear to you. Now let's move on and start off with the first topic, which is what is React JS. So coming to the first point uh, on this comparison between React versus React Native, let us actually take a step back to take a quick introduction to what React JS actually is. Well, if you're in this video, I'm already sure that you might know about React JS and you might know a little bit about uh, you know React Native as well. So let's not stress a lot about them and let's just check out what they are, right? So to give you a quick brief, a quick overview of what React JS is, it is one of the biggest, most popular JavaScript library of today that's used for building a beautiful front end without having to put much effort. So you can build all of the user interface components and render them very easily in a very powerful way. So when we think about React JS, uh, it was actually developed by all of the people at uh, Facebook, you know, the wonderful team at Facebook in 2011, and it was created to solve one particular issue with uh, creating a good user interface which is not only high performing but at the end of the day very efficient uh, in terms of loading in terms of uh, being able to reproduce a lot of animated 3d content and all of that uh, without having to drain much of uh, you know the resources available so to do all of this Facebook, the guys at Facebook came up with React.js. So it has the capability to address what we call as dynamic rendering, where let's say, uh, you know, if you're on a website, uh, if you move around and click around on a website, you might see that the website actually refreshes for many aspects. But then if React.js is used, you can have dynamic rendering where uh, you really do not have to reload web pages based on what's being displayed. So that is what dynamic rendering actually is in a very simple term. And uh, even though, uh, you know, React.js was developed in 2011, uh, they actually open sourced it and made it free for all in the year 2013. Now, if I have to quickly talk about the advantages of using React, uh, we have to talk about DOM because React makes use of something called as the virtual DOM, the document object model. And uh, the first question you might have in case if you're not uh, you know, into React as, as of yet, uh, you know, you'll, you'll say, what is DOM? Well, it's sort of an agreement that goes on in between the data inputs and the data outputs and certain methodologies and implementation that suggests on what happens, uh, you know, if your input is the way it is and what happens after rendering and how the output is shown and all of that. So it's a model that defines the bridge in between. These is the simplest way I can uh, convey it to you guys. As I mentioned with the uh, dynamic rendering aspect of React, right? So what happens is with React, it uses what we call as the virtual DOM and this virtual DOM, the usage has made the application of anything that's built with React to be exponentially faster, guys. So it will only refresh the parts of the page that is required and not the entire page in general, right? So what I told you in the previous slides, even though it sounds very simple, well, it is huge on performance and this is why React is gaining immense amount of popularity. And fun fact is that the Facebook developers who were actually, you know, developing React did not know that if you have just a partial refresh on uh, you know certain aspects or elements or widgets on the screen that it'll actually speed up the actual page so it was something they found along the way and now the entire world has jumped on it and the entire world now sees that partial refreshes and dynamic uh, usages uh, actually help and go a long way when you're working with web development as well. So what it led to is a huge boost in performance and at the end of the day whenever we talk about React it's about making sure that uh, you know you put in a small amount of code and you get a huge output so that's all uh, you know react is about 
and then the second advantage if we talk about is reusability so in react and in fact even react native so a majority of the components can be reused so there is no boilerplate code there is no uh, you having to type a lot of code creating a lot of components creating any sorts of inefficiency absolutely no so uh, in terms of developer uh, efficiency in terms of time and in terms of uh, you know you actually cutting down project requirements uh, in all of these factors uh, react is really amazing at all of these so if you have a redundant free code at the end of the day it's very good for you as a developer it's amazing for your client who's who has given the project to you as well because you you can deliver it that much faster that much that much better and you can cater your time on working on the logic uh, you know working on making it beautiful rather than having to sit and work on redundant things so you know there's a lot of developers across the globe who know react either they're using react or they're very much interested into seeing what all the hype is about right so in terms of readability as a new person approaching the framework uh, you know it offers maximum readability that means the syntax is very not uh, that means the syntax is very simple for you to learn it is not complex even though uh, you know there are certain bit of concepts which might feel like they are difficult once you master them you are good for a long way approach so uh, you know taking this simple approach into building a framework facebook developers have definitely done justice to this so you can get started quickly and work on it and at the end of the day you can put your time on logic and concentrate less on syntax to iterate from the previous point itself right so now with understanding what react was a couple of advantages and all of that check out react native react native is very very similar to react but in a way it is very different because here uh, we'll be making use of a framework where we're building native applications so whenever we talk about native applications right so think about byte code in case if you have heard of byte code see whenever you write a program right in any sort of high level programming languages as soon as your processor sees it it will not understand that so your program has to be compiled broken down into what we call as the uh, native code or the byte code which your processor can actually understand and work with and this exactly is what we're doing with react native so we have a language which is based off on javascript and we try to use this to bridge the gap between let's say android and ios for example to bridge gaps and make sure that you have one code that can do a lot of things right so what react native does is it compiles all of these into what we call as native app components and this at the end of the day can help you build native mobile application so one application one programming language can work for both ios and uh, you know android if it is done right so with react native as i just mentioned right so the base abstraction of uh, native react comes from react itself so the syntax is almost the same now you're wondering right so now you understand the advantage of react native right so you get to approach this in the native programming aspect of thing with having the ability to keep the syntax almost the same that is a huge win win so where does the difference lie in between react and react native well it's mostly in the components and how you use the components itself so we're going to check out all the differences in the upcoming slides but for now you have to understand quick advantages about using uh, react native one thing is for sure react native comes with all of the advantages that react provides and there is more on top of that as well so what happens in react native is all of the logic layer entities right it can be continuously reused as many times as you want to build the exact same application as i just mentioned for android ios or whatever the requirement is instead of having your developers work on android separately and having another set of developers work on ios separately right so this is a huge advantage so what happens with the rendering aspect of code is that there is native apis that can handle this there are certain programming interfaces which have the capability to understand native code and they know how to take whatever program that you have written in and convert it to an aspect where where the processor understands what's going on so it is uh, you know as simple as that uh one thing we get asked is hey how difficult is it to work with react native well let me tell you if you know javascript or if you know how javascript works in general the syntax and all of that it is very easy for you guys to jump to react native as well because there's another thing you have to understand here uh, if you're a front end developer and you're looking to move towards mobile development with react native that is very beautifully done so the jump will really not take much effort from your side and you'll find it easy as you go along as well 
well. Now, one very important thing where we talk about React Native, now that the world understands the power of React Native is that uh, we have old applications, right? So we have thousands of applications on the App Store if you can check right now. And not all of them use React Native, let's be very honest here. But then, now all of them or a majority of them would want to use React Native, right? So if you have an old application that you want to revamp or let's say you want to redo from scratch, doing it with React Native is going to add value from then there and uh, you know on towards the future as well. You can have all of the user interface components and you would really not have to rewrite them guys. So this is the biggest advantage of it. Uh, you know, with this, you might ask, is a React Native app development very slow or, or, you know, very time consuming and all of that? The answer is absolutely no. Let me tell you why. With React Native, you'll be concentrating on high speed development where you'll be catering to Android, iOS at the same time. So your performance just became two times what it is, right? And of course, with React, you can add responsiveness to your applications. You can make your applications more responsive in a way where uh, you know it gives a better user experience. It drives that niceness that we all love in our mobile applications, right? So it's all about that. And with, and with React Native, you can do all of these easily so if you're wondering about if react native app development is slow the answer is no 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 let us dive into the comparison between react and react native and the first point we'll check out is the platform right so you're already clear with this first point i'm sure so when we're talking about platform react you understand that it's already a framework that's used to build applications and it makes use of javascript while react native is an entire platform on its own with native apis with components and everything else all the bells and whistles where you can build native components mobile applications which are cross-platform guys guys the cross-platform word is the highlight here so the next point we have to check out is the learning curve because this is something we get asked a lot so when we're talking about React or React Native which is easier to learn. Well let me tell you this, when we talk about React JS, right, so it's, it's the most used JavaScript library out there right now in case if there is a requirement to build a very high performing user interface. This is done, this is sorted, we already discussed this. So what about React Native in terms of learnability? Well, React Native already has all of React's components. So if you learn React Native, right, you'll bring about everything there is to know about React JS and more. So learning either one of them should help you depending on what you want to do. If you're more inclined towards JavaScript and its usage, React JS will be very nice, very simple to start with. So if you want the challenge of moving towards native development or native programming, right, then React Native is going to give you this wonderful platform where you can put the exact time and effort and you will understand, you will value your time and efforts because at the end of the day, uh, you know, you're that much efficient at doing whatever React JS can do and in a better way. So coming to the next point in this React versus React Native comparison, we have to talk about rendering. Now, let's see, with rendering, what happens is that, so whatever browser code we have in React, right, if it's in React JS, it means it gets rendered through a virtual DOM, as I mentioned uh, in the first slide. But is this the same with React Native? The answer is no. React Native does not use the virtual DOM, but what it uses is the presence of native APIs. Uh, that is very vital, that is foundational, and it is a very important aspect of rendering all of these components, all of these reusable components. That's a keyword here, right? So, you know, rendering all of these reusable components on a mobile platform. So React JS uses virtual DOM, React Native uses native APIs. Now, if you're talking about syntax, Again, this could be complementary to our second point, which is which is easier to learn. Well, with syntax, React makes use of HTML and the syntax flow, which goes on and complements to HTML as well. So is this exactly HTML? No, it's all JavaScript, right? You already know this. But what about React Native? React Native makes use of its native syntax. The syntax itself is called as a native syntax. It's not very much, it's not very different when we compare it to the actual React JS syntax but it has its own kinks guys. So to start out with React JS will be very nice, very elegant to start with in case you're inclined towards JavaScript. But at the end of the day, as I mentioned, if you want to develop an app which caters both to the iOS, Apple audience and the Android user base, then of course React Native is going to be a wonderful tool to get started with. 
Now, when we talk about front-end development, mobile app development, there is something which takes center stage in terms of styling. It is cascading style sheets, right? Or CSS as we call it. So, what about React and React Native with CSS? One thing is that React.js will work amazingly well whenever you have to make use of CSS, let's say for animations, for styling, or, or to move around GIFs, or anything that has to do with styling, React will do it well. Now, React Native, again, has a standalone API. It's called the Animated API, where we can, you know, animate any of the components that has to be rendered on the screen uh, by making use of very simple code. So, in terms of using... So in terms of making use of CSS, right, React works well with CSS and React Native does not have to make use of CSS because it has its own API called as the animated API, which we used to work with. So is there a winner in this point? The answer is very difficult for this because CSS is again another amazing entity to work with on its own. But then the efficiency that React Native provides, right, the API is very easy, very elegant to use and really it doesn't take much effort to work with to get beautiful looking results and beautiful looking frontends for your applications as well. So in that aspect, each one has its own pros and each one has its own cons. With this, I'm sure you will have a question saying, hey, which should I pick? Guys, the answer to this is not as simple as you think, but then you can make up your mind. See, uh, with React, what it does is it is one of these frameworks which is rapidly growing in popularity ever since its launch, and it has the complete capability to build a good responsive user interface, which is dynamic, which is high performing for any sort of web application that you require. This at the end of the day is hugely advantageous for you as a learner because again, uh, you know, both React and React Native will help you launch your career in terms of uh, application development for this aspect only. One, because it's popular. Two, because it's an amazing tool to use. Number three, because the world is looking for React developers and React Native developers constantly, guys. So, uh, you know, you can use this as an aspect to take a, uh, you can use this as an aspect to take a side as well. Now with React Native, what actually happens is that is it will give you a simpler, a straightforward and elegant working methodology with the native code that we're working with, right? So whenever you're developing a mobile application, it feels native is what uh, we all need, React develop. It feels native. So when we talk about it feeling native in the developer's perspective, so you will not have to wonder about why the syntax is difficult because the syntax is very easy to follow with. You really don't have to, uh, you know, either delegate or work with two platforms at once, say Android and iOS. And you really do not have to put in much effort to build a very elegant solution for your mobile application. So if you are into that, and if you are, let's say, the informal term is vibing. So if you're vibing with that, then of course react native is what you have to do but then to get a complete picture my suggestion is to get started with react become proficient in react and then moving towards react native right so working towards that will be really simple this is the common consensus of a lot of react developers and professionals across the globe as well guys so which would you pick so is react js your pick or is react native what uh, you'd want to start out with. So head to the comment section and let us know. And on that note, you've reached the end of this comparison. I'll see you on the next one.